right, thank you all very much. We are back. It's been a vacation, and if you've missed the video updates, um, we try not to do this every single day, but on important turning points, and especially to follow up on some of the tweets that I've put out just to be responsible and to share people uh, what exactly all this maybe verbiage stands for. I just sent a tweet out that said, look for an LCC, or it looks like Apple could move higher. What did I mean by that? Well, first, after being on a vacation for seven days, no one ever, I think most traders, keeps you keep as a married man, you, you keep one eye on the market when you're on vacation, and you keep one eye out on, on the wife so that she doesn't watch you working while you're supposedly on a vacation, right? Does a trader ever take a vacation? No, you have to kind of look at things, but uh, long and the short of it is the markets don't stop. And last week, it was quite a volatile week on an intraday basis. At the end of the week, nothing really happened. But here's something very special of what we were talking about in our trading community today, as well as what was going on with the morning briefing at TradeStation. Every morning we do that, and then again in our live trading room. First and foremost, Apple is in a very strong position. This is my volume indicator based on percent change valuation on volume, not just overall volume changes. This is my person's market catcher, and I've gotten a lot of great feedback from you guys that are using and starting to learn to use this on Thinkorswim as well. So it's only available on Thinkorswim uh, with the PPS indicator as well as the, uh, if you type in my name on Thinkorswim, you'll see, or studies, John Person. Don't confuse Johns. There's a few of them, but you want John Person. And the PMC indicator, the PPS, which is the uh, bullish and bearish momentum indicator, the arrows, or otherwise known as buy and sell signals, as well as person's pivots can be found there. On TradeStation, we have a complete array of private indicators, such as this volume indicator. And again, the PMC indicator was born there. So now, with that stated, here's another interesting uh, concept of what I mean by the last conditional change. And we need a breakout, a close, greater than that line in the sand. That gray line is around 175.10. Um, 175.10 gets you a, um, a breakout on a daily closing basis. So let's take a look at that real quick and see what that all means. First, it means that the market ha needs to close. A, an, a market that moved lower, and it you can see that we, we had this big downturn, and then it came back up and it tried to test this gray line. It starts there, right? And then it tried to test it once and then bailed. And then the market came back up and tried to test it twice and then failed and then it came back to test near it again a third time and then failed and then a fourth time and then formed a doji which was indecision based on friday's action so we really need to see a close greater than that line in the sand it's not a guarantee that price will move up but with the person's market catcher or the relative strength outperforming the market on an increase in volume it absolutely gives us at least higher probability that the trend or the momentum is on our side and that we should see some follow-through strength. Now, what's neat about this chart is simply this. While the market had a lot of downside action, where is Apple relative to its highs? It's pretty darn close. It's not like the market just fell out of bed, right? So relative to the overall market, it's outperforming. Now let's take a look at this on a higher time frame on a weekly chart. If you visited my homepage at PersonsPlanet.com, you would see there's a video of me talking and saying hi to everybody and welcoming you to my website. But more importantly, it also talks about filling out and, and asking for this special uh, report or indication that something I published back 14 years ago that has been taught to literally, I, I'm going to have to say, more than 20, 25,000 uh, students worldwide, number one. Number two, it's been published in all my books by John Wiley and Sons, Candle and Pivots Point Trading Triggers. So there's a lot of other educators and people out there um, that and, and hedge funds. And in, in fact, this is a strategy, people using this. It is not just a candlestick. It tells us it is based on candles, but it's a system. It tells you when to get in, where your stop goes, holding period, and the, the amount of time expected to see the desired, get this, the upside potential. So it gives us four things, entry, 
risk, holding period, profit objective, first profit objective. So with that stated, we generated one of these weekly high close doji patterns on Apple. The relative strength on a weekly basis is starting to outperform. That's why it's bright blue. And my volume indicator is showing that there is some upside. So it doesn't come without risk. It's not risk free. But if you look at that pattern right there on the weekly chart, it looks very reminiscent and ex it's what is exciting. So you got to take a lot of these signals. Look at the pattern that you see back here in February, right? Doji, high closed doji. The difference is that this market had an action to the downside, so it had was capable of a reaction to the upside. And that's, and if you notice, the relative strength was turning more positive and on assumption of stronger volume. So the relative strength's not bad. The volume's great. So if we can get that confirmation of that breakout, that's why I said on a daily close greater than 175.10. So that's what I was saying greater than that's the greater than sign the less than sign is that way right so we need a close the daily close close greater than 175.10 it gives me some upside potential all right let's look at some other markets real quick well before i do that if we can get that that confirmation close greater than 175.10 that's when i would say it might be wise to step in because we would expect to see this move happen by the end of next week. Wednesday this week, we have a beige book report. There's always some headline news coming out of Washington, D.C. That we can count on, right? But we also are entering in earnings season. Netflix out on the close today, so that should be kind of a, like maybe a stepping stone uh, for at least positive traction in, in the technology user uh, application type products. And so I don't know if that's going to help Apple, but it wouldn't hurt if, if Netflix came out with some positive uh, story. So now with that stated, if I'm looking for sharp upside relatively soon, if I have a timing event that could help me, why would I buy an option that's got too much time uh, factor to it? That's why I said by next week, the April um, 20th expiration, you could look, or excuse me, the April 27th uh, expiration with 11 days you look for that would be a week from this Friday you'd look for the uh, 180 calls for something like I don't know 65 70 cents something like that and hopefully we get a move that would be greater than or equal to and come right up to that zone of resistance which is why I said in the email uh, or the tweet excuse me 183 plus so that's what that symbiology was meant to say in that last uh tweet all right so let's let's look at this weekly chart and say well where did he come up with that 183 now kind of funny that you notice that there's a gray line up here and look at that gray line says 183.50 we have a buy signal on a weekly basis using the hcd high closed doji and we have a target of around 183 plus there's where we got that so small risk we should see hopefully some follow through in the next two weeks all right let's move on yeah, last week was something pretty special in the considering the fact that the last video I think we did showed the market was long, uh, the VXX, which that trade, it had a profit, and then it got stopped out. The system went short. It got stopped out with a minor uh, loss. We went long and held that for like half a day, and then finally the system kicked in and went short again. So that should help a new trader understand that A, not all trades are winners and you gotta still stay with a fight and stick with your system. So with that stated, it went short and held that short and then finally exited. Now, that means that while we did have a slight drawdown in profit, as you can see, that's what the green is, closed profits. You'll also notice it concluded that trade and now we have a newer equity high in profit on the system's performance. Now, the criteria in which to be short was as it exited a profit target. So it has built-in profit target. It says override everything, forget trailing stops. If it hits a profit target, it gets out, it did. But it also has a function that says if the criteria to be short or long is still inactive, then enter in the trade. So it did. It got right back in and currently is short again. So as you can see, even from its current position, it's up a couple bucks. And that is the performance of the VXX 
trading system that we've created using the person's lifetime package on TradeStation combined with the Algo Optimizer. So there it is. Now, last but not least, let's look at what am I been talking about with the uh, Russell. And quite frankly, the Russell if and, and versus the overall market, kind of fun-filled facts, the S&P 500 as of Friday was down on the year, down a quarter percent. We we're down 0.24 on a year-to-date basis. Whereas the Russell, the IWM, is up about 1.2% on the year. So we've gained the Russell 1.2% on the year. That's nice. Look at the direction of the volume using Joe Granville's on-balance volume. And look at the advanced decline cumulative ratio line that we have on the Russell. You'll see it's perking its little head right now. Today, if we maintain this value into the close, it would be a positive breakout. It would also signify a breakout above the 323 high, which is that guy right there, this one right there. We closed greater than that on Thursday. It failed Friday and it bounced back up. But this time, it bounced back up with positive volume and positive breadth. Even my own volume indicator concludes that today's action is stronger if it maintains this. I don't know how it's going to close, but, you know, a lot of things can happen in the final 30 minutes, as everyone has seen in this world. So it's not important how the market opens. It's how it closes and on the condition in which it closes. But if this was the close and we were here on positive uh, breadth and the volume, then it looks as if we're going to see uh, follow through strength in the Russell relative to the other segments of the market. So I think we might get that in the form of maybe some small cap energy. Maybe we get some small cap drug stocks. Uh, maybe we get some small cap technology stocks. And that would be maybe Netflix setting the tone in that department. We'll see. But with that stated, if we can kind of get uh, a, a conclusive close greater than those highs and this pivot or resistance area on the spiders or the S&Ps, uh, that would be positive, but I'm not banking on it. Volume's not great, and but if it does, maybe it's not today, but on the day it does close greater than that line in the sand in the ES, we should see some follow-through strength overall in the market. I hope you enjoyed this. It's fun. To, it's, it was fun to have a vacation, number one, and it's also great to be back in the saddle again. Thanks, everybody.